sponsored by Surfshark. I think Eminem said it best. Yep, Techno, the sub-brand of Tranchon Holdings, doesn't sell phones in the U.S., so most folks here have never heard of it, despite it being the brand that brought us a color-changing Mondrian phone last year and the world's most affordable large-format foldable back in the spring. Not content to lay back in the cut, Techno is kicking off the fall with another foldable, this time a flip phone that's weird, whimsical, and... What? Only $600! This deserves a look under the hood on Into the Fold. Quick word, it's a quick look and not a review because the business reality of being a YouTuber in Techtember is that at times like these, I've got to prioritize the iPhone and the other phones I can't tell you about yet that will sell in the US. Stay tuned. So I'm sorry this can't be a deeper dive, but also, Four years after the official return of flip phones via foldable technology, we've reached a state of semi-maturity across the clamshell category. With manufacturers having, regrettably, settled on a common size and shape, and even brands like Ulephone. 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 Poised to break into the space, the only major variations we're seeing in flip phones right now are in three categories cover display capabilities, style, and price. You could also make an argument for cameras, but let's put a pin in that and return to it after the Oppo Find N3 Flip launches. God, Find N3 Flip, Galaxy Z Flip 5, Razer 40 Ultra, we sure are back to the bad old days of smartphone brand name word salad, aren't we? Given that backdrop, Phantom V Flip is actually kind of simple. Anyway, this phone doesn't quite satisfy all three of those differentiators because it's not trying to maximize cover display utility. Instead, it's using that outer screen to lean into the second category, style. Techno took a cue from countless China-based smartphone designs and blew up the camera platform to massive proportions. But here, it's pushed those cameras outward to the perimeter to make room for a small but distinctive cover screen in the center. Nope, it's not the first time. Huawei beat Techno to the punch with a circular display on the P50 Pocket last year. In fact, all you have to do to find more corner-free cover screens is reach far enough into the past, or the wonderfully weird world of vintage Asia market phones. This crazy Casio was a gift of friend of the channel The Flipside Story on Instagram, whom you should follow for just the best kind of WCDMA weirdness. Techno's implementation is notable because of its boldness. The eye, already drawn to this monster black hole, is rewarded by a screen that follows the same shape, the whole thing resembling nothing so much as an oversized Movado smartwatch. You can't do much of use out here. Small email or text previews, sure. The expected widgets and toggles, a camera preview of sorts. But really, this is all about standing out. And to that end, you get a fairly wide selection of whimsical wallpapers, whale-related and otherwise. Most of these are too cartoonish for my taste, but I do love the orbital one, which makes clever use of the frame shape to suggest a spacecraft porthole. Also, Techno gives you the tools to make your own with an animated GIF, so Trek nerds like me can slap on the communicator transceiver pattern this desperately calls for. Sure, I wish the screen was bigger, but you've got to remember, this is the cheapest flip-style clamshell the world has yet seen. So I'd wager the screen selection was probably based on which panels Techno could source. This identical size and resolution is used by the Huawei Watch GT and Neolina smartwatches, so it's likely pretty easy to get in Techno's headquarters city of Shenzhen. If you keep that budget in mind, Techno's design here impresses too. Surrounding the cover crater and wrapping around the back is a pleasant periwinkle-like pleather material that's exponentially nicer than the wax paper the company used for its V-Fold. In fact, it feels very similar to the backplate on Motorola's Razer Plus, and Techno added some visual flair to the backside with this subtle dual-tone design and charm-like vanity plate. I'm dwelling on the design in part because of how much of a win this is versus the category leader in every metric that matters, Samsung's Galaxy Flip 5. 
The Galaxy is unquestionably the more capable product, but this year, in order to make room for that huge cover screen, Samsung had to abandon its own dual-tone design, something that had helped the Flip stand out for two years. So while it might be a bit derivative for Techno to use it on the back of its Phantom V Flip, it's both more visually interesting and more satisfying to hold than Samsung's hyper-minimal, greasy, glossy glass. In a world where the novelty of a hinge is no longer enough to set a phone apart, manufacturers would do well to remember that a phone's surface is a limitless canvas for expression. Huawei brought in a famous designer to do the P50 Pocket, and I still occasionally just hold that phone up to the light and marvel at its sheer brassy brazenness. Bravo. Open her up, and the compromises made to hit that price point become more pronounced. We'll get to the blemishes after the break. As you may have noticed, I'm back on the road this year, and that means my sponsor Surfshark is back in my taskbar. It's not that I don't trust airport or hotel Wi-Fi, but when I'm rushing around in travel mode, I worry that I might mistake a fraudulent public network for an authentic one. That's called an evil twin attack, by the way. Well, by using a VPN like Surfshark, I can make sure that all the data I'm sending while I'm on the go is encrypted, which keeps me safer. Also, it keeps me in control by making it harder for a service provider to throttle or limit my connection in order to squeeze me for more money. Speaking of money, save some. Get Surfshark at the link in the description and use code Mr. Mobile for 83% off and three extra months free. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Inside the V-Flip is a pretty typical 6.9-inch folding screen at a stretched Full HD resolution, refreshing 120 times a second. It's perfectly suitable for the great indoors, but take it outside, and its disappointing max brightness makes me so thankful that we're no longer in the doldrums of dim displays when it comes to foldables. Those were bad years. Also, this screen protector is the most smudge-prone surface I've encountered in ages. The thing came out of the box smudged. This is gross. Don't ship a phone like this, gang. Probably a result of Techno flashing some pre-production software on there before shipping me this review unit, but even with my best chamois, I can't get this thing clean. The cover screen protector, too, is misaligned and I think had some air bubbles underneath. I don't, maybe? I, if you stick around to the end, I'll peel it off and we'll see what the face looks like unadorned. Now, I don't think I can blame cost-cutting for the state of the Android software skin, because the fact is that HiOS just wasn't made for Western markets. I mean, it's not as bad as it could be. Any launcher that lets me use a bottom swipe app drawer and swipe down notification shortcut is at least livable. Still, as Android Police points out, software updates are a huge question mark at this point. And there's enough here that's intrusive or clumsy or just plain archaic to dim the luster that the hardware set up. And while I didn't have time to test the camera system almost at all, because again, this isn't a review, nothing in Techno's history convinces me that the cameras will surprise or delight. Especially when you got companies out there like Oppo specifically focused on upping the game in the flip phone camera department. To bring us back to the point, there are 50,000 reasons those compromises just don't give me too much pause today. Those reasons are rupees, the currency used in the launch market of India, and while Techno calls that an early bird price, so it'll probably go up later, the fact remains that today this is a $600 phone. And that's significant, no matter how well or poorly it does, because foldables have finally gotten there, to the true mid-range. Now, we'll see if Techno cut too many corners to do so, if we start seeing widespread reports of hinge failures, or if this time next year the thing hasn't gotten a single software update. But the V-Flip's mere existence is cause for foldable fans to celebrate. And, you know, if I were Motorola, I'd be breathing a sigh of relief that this thing isn't coming to the States. Because up against the conservative-looking Razer Minus, well, this could be a real phantom menace. Now that's better. This episode of Into the Fold was produced following several days with a pre-production Phantom V Flip review sample provided by Techno, but the company did not pay a fee for this coverage, nor did I give it copy approval rights or any other editorial input into my content. 
Please subscribe to the Mr. Mobile on YouTube if you like videos like this, because folks, it's going to be a folding phone fall. And to invoke the famous phrase of a former folding phone champion of sorts, I am pumped. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.